Hello everyone and welcome to the Foreman Community Demo number 70. Uh, I request you all to increase your uh, video quality uh, to get a better experience. If you have any questions, you can ask us on the Foreman IRC channel or the YouTube chat. Let's move to, towards today's agenda. Uh, before moving to today's agenda, uh, I would like to say that as a reminder, as a reminder, we will have a Foreman booth at the FOSDEM and Config Ma Management Camp conferences and a Foreman track for Config Management as well. The infrastructure room for FOSDEM and Config Management Camp CFPs are still open, uh, but not for long. So hurry up and uh, if you want to get a talk in, uh, please uh, uh, apply for a CFP. Last demo, uh, Ori had covered up for me, so thanks Ori for that. Uh, we had talked about open source camp uh, that was uh, happening while we were speaking. So we didn't have a full picture yet, but now I can tell you that there were 30 attendees and we got a very good feedback uh, from the OS camp. Thank you to Netways for organizing and thank you to all our speakers for participating. If you want to see more details and pictures, there is a nice blog up on the site. And there is also the newsletter which was uh, written by Ori this uh, month. So go check that out. Next up, uh, we have Tomer who will be talking about uh, Foreman 2.0. Then we have Andre who will speak about uh, choose default template for job invocation. And lastly, we will have Lucas talking about various topics like uh, Foreman 1.24 test week, discovery leads to reverse and change, and new cockpit seamless login integration. So uh, without wasting any more time, uh, I would like to uh, over give Tomer the opportunity to speak about Foreman 2.0. So over to you, Tomer. Thanks, Saur. Um, so those of you who have been following our community discourse, um, you will probably uh, maybe have seen some uh, posts about Foreman 2.0, about uh, some things that are being deprecated and removed. So I just wanted to uh, take the opportunity of uh, explaining this change in, this, in the demo today. Um, there will also be a post about it, uh, including all of the changes, um, just so everyone is aware of it. But uh, we have reached a point where the next Foreman version, uh, which was supposed to be Foreman 1.25, includes a lot of major changes, and we decided this is a really good time for making it Foreman 2.0. And uh, while we're changing the major version, we're also going to be dropping some things that we have been planning to drop for a long time. Um, and you should uh, make sure that your your environment is prepared for this upgrade. Some uh, major things that you should be aware of um, are support for databases other than Postgres uh, is being dropped. There's a migration script and a blog post about how to migrate if you're still using MySQL or uh, SQLite in your environment. Uh, MySQL is going to be completely dropped. We are still going to be using SQLite for development and uh, build purposes, but it shouldn't be used as a production environment. And in fact, you will not be able to upgrade to Foreman 2.0 on uh, SQLite. Another major change that is being planned for Foreman 2.0 is that we are going to be dropping smart variables from Puppet classes. Smart variables were initially introduced as a way of passing parameters only to specific classes back in the days when Puppet didn't support parameterized classes. Now, parameterized classes were introduced, I think, in Puppet 2.6. I think it's about five or six years old by now. So you should have probably migrated to parameterized classes a long time ago. And uh, there is no longer a need for smart variables. You need to uh, use a global variable, uh, make a global parameter available inside Puppet classes for some reason. You can also use global parameters, which now also have type support. So that was one of the uh, issues that were preventing us from dropping it a long time ago, but now that uh, global parameters have types, there is no reason anymore for smart variables. So you can expect that to be dropped. There are also some uh, architectural changes that are being planned. 
uh, hopefully they will be mostly unnoticed uh, from the user perspective. Uh, things like changing the default web server from Passenger to Puma, um, changing the way Dynflow manages its tasks. Uh, it will now be using Sidekick and Redis, which is already an, ex uh, an experimental feature in Foreman 124, but Foreman 2.0, we plan to make this the default. Uh, we will also be upgrading uh, Postgres to uh, 10, and we will be upgrading Rails to Rails 6. Um, and there will be several API endpoints that have been deprecated a long time ago that we will also be dropping in Foreman 2.0. So be sure to go over the deprecation notices in the Foreman 124 release, 123 release, and before upgrading to Foreman 2.0, make sure that uh, you read all of the upgrade uh, information that is included and in, will be included in the Foreman 2.0 manual. That's it for me. Back to you, Raul. Uh, thanks, thanks, Tomo. That is some very important information for our community folks to know, I guess. So uh, please refer to what Tomer has said, and uh, uh, hopefully, uh, Foreman 2.0 will be. Uh, will work for you and will be great for you. So next up, we have Andre uh, to speak. So over to you, Andre. Thank you. Uh, you should be able to see my screen now. And today I'll be talking about uh, this feature that I added. Uh, that it allows you to choose a default uh, job template for job invocation form because when you go to job invocation form, there's already job category and job template uh, pre-selected. Uh, and uh, these are sorted alphabetically, so whichever uh, template is first, it gets uh, selected. So if you have remote execution, it's probably an SSH action. If you have already an Ansible plugin, then it will be uh, some Ansible, uh, Ansible template. Uh, but if there is a template that you use very often or uh, that you prefer to use, you now can uh, configure, uh, configure, configure the form that uh, the template is pre-selected by default. And you can do that by going into settings and choosing form job template. So I'll switch from Ansible run playbook to maybe uh, module action, SSH default. And when I go to job invocation form and to refresh the form, uh, you can see that I have the uh, module action SSH uh, default as uh, uh, the template that is pre-selected. And that is all. Thanks, Andre. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure that feature would help a lot of folks. Uh, in the end, we have Lukash, uh, who will speak about multiple top topics. So over to you, Lukash. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I'll go ahead and share my screen. Uh, what? Okay. Now you should see my uh, Google Chrome. Yeah, that's uh, see. Thank you. So the first thing I would like to mention is that um, we're very close to the 124 release, which is great. Uh, however, there is still a possibility to test our RC1, RC2, or RC3. Uh, we have we are, we are tracking our effort in um, order to uh, find all the bugs and search for Foreman 124 Test Week on our Discord site. You will find this uh, entry, and this is our attempt. As every, with uh, with every release, um, we're trying to. Um, document all the workflows which are um, important or which are being tested, and check those if um, you know if the, the the scenario is is a is a success. So if you can uh, go ahead search this topic, it's actually a wiki page, so you can actually scroll down and click edit um, and edit a new uh, scenario if you have it, or just check what you actually have checked 
Uh, and that's pretty much it. So uh, we're looking forward to the 124 final release. It's looking great. Uh, my next topic uh, will be uh, um, discovery and the unused IP. So uh, sorry about the delay. I'm, I was just finishing uh, running installer on this instance here. So hopefully this will come come up because um, I'm just enabling uh, a one-off features I'll be showing later today. So it will probably need oh. Uh, it, it, so it's coming up. So uh, the first thing I would like to show is, is discovered host and its um, unused IP. So previously, when you discovered the host, and I know this is a little bit uh, small, but I can make it bigger perhaps. But uh, this, on the discovered uh, index page, we have uh, too many columns. Uh, so probably we need to refactor this. So the, there's not enough space. So previously, when you discovered the host, it would um, uh, get a lease from the HTTP server and then discover against, you know, um, uh, Foreman server and upload facts. And uh, Foreman would detect this, uh, the subnet and, you know, um, file the, the, the entry in, the, in, in its inventory, including the IP address, um, which is actually a lease. So it's um, a temporary uh, IP address handed over by uh, a DHCP server. Now, when you clicked on provision, when you provision or auto provision a host, uh, previous behavior was that Bowman was never touching the IP address at all. So it, all the hosts were provisioned with the very same IP address. So um, the DHCP server was, you know, asked to do a reservation for this IP address, and it would, you know, turn this into a reservation. So this is, unless you made the provisioning, you know, using um, using a form uh, interactively, and you changed the the IP address manually using your mouse or keyboard. Well, that was the only case that you know the the IP address would be changed. So this was not the best experience, and we are finally changing this. This was one of the highest highest voted uh, issues on Redmine not only for discovery, but across all the plugins and even maybe core top three that uh, you would, you guys would like to see, uh, you wanted to see Foreman actually doing and performing the unused, we, we call this an unused IP call. So um, when you create a new, when you create a new host, let me do this in a, in a new tab. And I select, uh, select, um, let me just make it a little bit smaller so it renders fine. Uh, so here, every time you, you click on Suggest New, it would actually go ahead and ask the DHCP server for a new uh, unused IP address. If that subnet, which is in my case C1199, has an IP, I, I am, IP address management set to DHCP. If that's set to none, it won't you know, give you any address. Um, and we wanted to, so from now, the discovery, uh, behavior is the same. So um, note that this host was discovered with uh, 199.12 and I'm going to click the button now and I'm going to provision it with my fast CentOS create host. So it was point, uh, 12 and it should uh, you know request a new uh, reservation from the uh, range. As you can see now, the address is 199.170, which is actually, if I go to my subnets, that is, and that is here, uh, confusing menu. It's over, uh, I do it like, I do this 100 times a day and I always struggle. It's this fourth one, subnets. So in my subnet, I have my range set to 110 on to 100, uh, 240. So this falls into this sub uh, this, into this sub uh, range. So previously this was completely ignored, and uh, the old discovery host uh, got the very same IP address or very same reservation, but from the from the actually lease pool. So um, it, this was not the best approach. Um, and in the documentation we also recommend to divide your subnet um, space into two pools. One pool is, uh, should be reserved for, um, you know, temporary leases, which I mean, in my case is one, 
10 to 109 or, or 100 and the other part um, which is in my case 10, uh, 110 to 240 that should be reserved for reservations that's how you usually do it on, on the DHCP and this cover was not falling into uh, onto this picture correctly now uh, now it's it's uh, it's finally works as you'd expect so this long long uh, standing bug was fixed however this is kind of regression this is a big change for those who use discovery you will see that discovery will do an extra call it will be slightly slower and uh, the most importantly um, it will change the behavior so like uh, when you upgrade to 124 keep in mind that this will change um, uh, or if, if that breaks just reach out to us and we'll help to help you out um, we, uh, however if you have the your uh, subnet set to none IPM MI address management is sent to none discovery will um, work as expected uh, too so it won't touch the IP address it will you know pass it in as is so this will so basically if you want to have the um, if you want to have the existing uh, or the old behavior you can still set the IP m to uh, none and then you will get uh, the old behavior so that's pretty much all I have for the discovery change and the last on the list um, is actually uh, seamless integration with cockpit I'm not sure if that got installed properly because I was preparing my VM um, and few mom few moments ago but this looks good so what I have here in my all hosts page which is over here and I think it's this one Mario oh yeah Mario Mario's the one so here I have a I have a host that has been provisioned using my format instance here it was just simple provisioning without any changes and then I went ahead and SSH to the host and I basically installed cockpit yum install cockpit and I enabled cockpit so like system control enable now cockpit service or cockpit uh, socket depending on which one you prefer and the last uh, the third command was uh, firewall configuration so firewall control uh, at, uh, at service cockpit and these three commands were performed on this performed on this host now this host has been provisioned foreman so it uh, should have the ssh keys so foreman should be able to reach it out um, and i've on my foreman this is one uh, 124 rc2 i performed foreman installer with um, remote execution cockpit uh, option which is our, a new option coming in uh, to 124 which um, sets up uh, uh, an extra foreman cockpit service which is actually talking to the remote service and doing all the all the magic so the the the, the whole feature which was contributed by uh, I'm not sure but I think it was Mark Marcus Volmer uh, Ivan Enchos and Adam Ruzicka and possibly others so I was not doing this one at all and the the feature was in that the the the, the expected uh, feature was uh, that the moment you have everything all set up correctly and the cockpit is running on the target machine on the on the managed host you should be able to click on this web console uh, button and foreman and cockpit should you know negotiate the all the uh, all the details and using a single sign-on I'm not sure how the protocol actually works it's a little bit complicated but we do have a thread on our discourse explaining all the details it should give you a seamless login uh, you know so, so now we, if that works I and I'm click this button and we should be taken um, to the cockpit um, of this host without any um, authentication so let me just oh <laughs> all right so yeah uh, sorry about that uh, this looks like uh, this looks like a bug we fixed in RC2 it is uh, it is uh, a different port which is, has been merged in RC3 but I, I had no time to prepare sorry about that so what you would see probably is something like this immediately like uh, I don't have a DNS actually uh, so <laughs> I can't show you but anyway I think there is a video uh, 
starting on our site that shows you how this works. So it basically gives you cockpit immediately without uh, without logging or password. And every time you log out uh, from uh, from cockpit, you would again be author authorized or authenticated um, uh, to use it. So yeah, sorry about that. That was uh, me not preparing early enough for this demo. And I guess uh, looking on the agenda, uh, I think this is it for me. Uh, thanks, Lukash. Uh, that was very informative. And with that, we will end our community demo number 70. Uh, thank you for joining in. And I will see you again in the next community demo. Thank you.